Okay, <laughs> let's continue. Mr. Harbison brought up something that I did not realize. If you look on page 242 under the section that says standard belt cross sections, he noted that in the uh, third paragraph, it says that the cog type uh, of the same section, the letter X is added to the designation. So 5V is a smooth inner surface, while 5VX is the cog type. I learned something today. Seems like I learned something every semester. I like that. So now we know. So if you buy a belt and it has an X on the end, it's the cog type. It would look like that. Okay. It's satisfying. I like learning things. Okay, let's talk about chains and then we'll size them. There's more to all of this than what I'm showing you. There's some detail when we talk about what pulleys you select and the fact that they're only standard, well, they're not only standard size of pulleys. The, the practical pulleys are standard size pulleys. Machining out your own pulleys is not really practical. Okay, you can do it, but it's probably not a good idea. So um, anyway, there, there's more detail to deal with here. And that the actual power that the drive can transmit is also a function of the pulleys. So we'll, we'll see that in the context of an example problem. But let me get through chains quickly. And then we'll, we'll work through all of this. Now for chain, basically chain is, is classified by its pitch or the distance between the links. So um, when you measure the distance, you, you can get different sizes of chain, okay, which varies primarily based on the, the, the spaces between them. But there are other dimensions that can chain. For example, Heavy series roller chain has thicker side link plates, so it can transmit more force. Um, you can get roller chain that is double stranded. So these actually have pins that go all the way through and hold the chain together so that it's two strands and can carry more, more load. There's also so-called double pitch drive chains, and these chains don't have uh, a uh, roller in between where you would normally have them. They're still nominally, say that this is a, a quarter inch spacing, this is still nominally quarter inch chain. That's what it's made to interface with. But they're, they're double spaced. Here's double pitch conveyor chain. Why do you think anyone would want to use a double pitch chain? Wear reduction, possibly. What's that? Possibly weight reduction. Wear reduction is the main reason, that's right. So if you think about it, Every time these rollers come around and impact with the, the sprocket teeth, they wear them somewhere. Now, if you have an odd number of sprocket teeth, what will happen is on one revolution, one set of teeth or one set of, of grooves will get hit. And because of the double pitch on the chain, when it rotates the next time, the next set of grooves will be hit. And so you end up doubling the life of your sprocket. Okay, so that's uh, one way of doing it is with a so-called double pitch chain. If you look at the geometry, though, this is technically not just two times the pitch, right? It would have to be less than two times the pitch. That's why it's still nominally, say, a quarter inch chain. Because the distance from here to here will not be a half inch. It will have to be less. Because as the regular sprocket, or the regular chain interfaces with the sprocket, this is going to be bent. And so that spacing is a little bit different. If you think about it, too, the sprocket has to be designed so that the actual distance from center to center of the, the groove is a quarter of an inch to accommodate this. So you've got to be careful when you design a double pitch chain. Uh, but anyway, fortunately, you guys prob probably none of you would design double pitch chain. That's already a standard, and so you would just buy a chain and use it. But when the chain is manufactured, it has to be manufactured fairly precisely. So here's some, some big names in the field of, of chains. Browning and Martin both make a lot of power trans uh, transmission and mechanical components. Now, how can, can chains fail? Well, they can fail due to fatigue of the link plates. If you think about it, and let's just say, let's take Mr. DeBenedetto's example. Let's say the bigger sprocket is the, the driving sprocket. Then the tight side would be here, right? If you're pulling on this chain, this would be the slack side. But what happens to one particular set of links as it goes through? Well, it gets stretched on this side, and as it comes over here, it's released, right? So it's like you're taking it stretch, release, stretch, release. That's a fatigue type load. So fatigue of the so-called side plates or link plates, which also are in between the, the uh, uh, rollers, <coughs> excuse me, is one way that chains can fail. Chains do stretch over time. That's why on a, an engine that has a timing chain, there are tensioners that typically are designed to maintain a constant amount of side force on the chain, even as the chain wears. Um, 
Now, another thing that happens as the chain comes around, you think about it, you're, you're having to change the direction here, right? But as the sprocket teeth come around, the rollers will impact in, in the bottom of the grooves, and that's another way that the, the rollers and teeth wear each other. There can also be galling of the pins in the bushings. The pins in the bushings are the things that go in between the rollers and allow the rollers to roll relative to the chain links. Well, basically that's kind of like a bearing, right? It has to roll, it has to change angle. And so um, there can be galling. If, if the load is too high, if there's too much force there, then there can be material transfer. So lubrication is critical. You have to have good chain lubrication to prevent it from failing. Um, and so there's, there's three basic types. There's manual or drip, which is where you manually select to you get your three-in-one oil out to oil your bicycle chain, right? So you've got a, 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 an industrial uh, scenario. You'd have people that go around and, and maintain the chain by oiling, or you would have some type of reservoir with an automatic uh, distribution of oil that either could even be controlled by a computer somewhere or is just set mechanically to have a certain oil flow rate onto the chain. Now we're looking at the chain from the, the come out this way, okay? If you look at it from the side, you get to see the link plates and so on. But this is a three strand chain where oil's being dripped on the hopefully optimal area to get oil into the workings of the chain and keep it lubricated. There's also the bath type, which is where the chain is basically dipped into oil as it comes around can lubricate chains well. There's also pump type where you uh, have a pump that uh, pumps oil up to the chain and, and lubricates the chain that way. So there's many different types, but all some type of lubrication is of course required. Now that you've heard me talk for a while, I'm going to shut off the camera because the next thing we'll do is watch a video on how a chain is made, maybe watch a video eventually on how pulleys are made and some other ones. I've got some decent ones for this section. But I'm also going to just work example problems. So if you're watching the video, you can switch over to uh, those videos.